is Tank. Today we will be, I will be reviewing an up-and-coming novel Beneath the Rising by Primi Mohamed. I hope I pronounce it correctly. Well, um, cosmic horror is hard. It's hard to write because you cannot be overly explicit with it. Uh, otherwise it loses its luster. As soon as someone says the word, the word Lovecraftian, the work, no matter what, is pigeonholed into a very specific niche, a niche it might not even belong into. And today I'd like to talk about a cosmic horror story that's actually an example of that. What's the premise? Uh, we have two characters, Nick Prasad and Joanna Johnny Chambers. They are two main characters, best friends since childhood. Johnny is a genius. She is smart, she is from rich white family. She is a polymath, she is a genius. She is someone who is exceptional at every single discipline there is. Nick, on the other hand, he is brown, he is poor, and he uh, is secretly in love with her. She does something stupid, well, maybe, maybe not stupid, but dangerous by creating a type of reactor that could change the world, eliminate all of our fossil fuel ills. But by doing so, she awakens the old ones, the ancient ones, who are not happy about it and not to spoil furthermore, out to get our heroes. First of all, who is Primi Mohammed? Um, she's a scientist and uh, I believe she's based in Alberta, Canada. This is first book of hers that I've read. She started publishing in 2015, I believe. Uh, she had her story published in anthology called She Walks in Shadows. And she also has written Apple Tree Throne and uh, numerous uh, short stories that she published online and in print. Now let's delve deeper into this book. First of all, what I expected. Um, I expected very little because I I took it on a whim on, from NetGalley and the vibe I got from the cover and the blurb was more of a weird fiction. So I expected the, the eldritch cosmic horror to be more in the foreground, more of a backdrop. Um, and nothing else. Honestly, that's the that was the only expectation I had. What I got, <laughs> everything. I this, it's this novel is bursting at seams with themes and ideas, especially themes. We've got a theme of racial profiling uh, because the protagonist is brown. Closely tied to that, we have alternate universe, and since the alternate universe angle is 9-11 attack happened but the towers were not hit but the consequences for muslim people were similar it also ties into the color of protagonist then we have coming of age story then we have uh, well weird fiction explicitly lovecraftian explicitly Eldritch explicitly cosmic something that I did not expect because it turns that knob really quickly what I liked well I'm happy to say that I loved the central duo the protagonist especially the he uh, is the only POV we get um, he is very self-aware uh, but he is self-aware in a way where he tries to be self-aware in regards to his relationship with his best friend it's not like he's in denial about some things he just actively works on getting over them suppressing them like his feelings other thing that i really liked the old ones it's kind of a staple of this subgenre to uh, just make the point of view character mad um, and write a diary or a letter or something. But here, uh, the old ones, they like, 
like in many similar works, uh, they exist in some other dimension outside of time and space. They get closer to our world as a result of Johnny's invention. And when they get closer, this blackout that happened, the author employs poetry. Like uh, the blackout happens and suddenly we have passage of almost atonal abstract poems and they are kind of not kind of rather effective as a tool in conveying the absolute unknowable nature of these old ones and uh, second thirdly actually what i loved i mentioned that uh joanna johnny as her nickname is is a polymath and having polymaths or genius um, as central characters can be very tricky. Um, doubly so because she is very young. When I started reading it, I got a feeling at the start. I was getting a bit annoyed because I thought that her genius is actually the least believable part of the novel, not the eldritch abominations, but her inventing life-altering, life-saving drugs and earth-shattering inventions before she even hits puberty. And we are constantly being reminded about her intense intellect. As I said, at first I, I found it to be too cliche, too absurd, but slight spoilers, this happens fairly early. We find out that she is a genius because she made a bargain with the old ones when she was three years old. They approached her and it ties into her genius because she, it raises the stakes significantly. She has to sacrifice her lifespan when she is in the zone, when she is actively using her heightened intellect. And the price of knowledge, the highest price of knowledge is very well realized here. Also, no spoilers, really like the ending. Now let's go to the things I didn't care for. Um, this is a minor thing and dear watchers, please take this with a grain of salt and knowledge that I'm not an American, um, but here it goes. I don't think that setting this novel in the early 2000s added anything to the story. Um, in fact, early 2000 references like Napster and second Lord of the Rings film coming out really got on my nerves and this sort of things always gets on my nerves. But I do realize that alternate history angle served a purpose. We also find out that the old ones were responsible for various catastrophes, wars during the Earth's history. After the author establishes that things went slightly different in this reality, like 9-11 attack happened, but the plane crashed into the river, we could have set, or the author could have set uh, the novel into the contemporary time of 2020 and not 2002. Uh, I can see why the author set it in the early 2000s to underline Nick's otherness and tangents of the time towards brown people and racial profiling that people suffered. But the trouble is, again, I'm not an American. I have a feeling that this sort of things, um, abuse, treatment of people, of minorities still happens 20 years since. So it might as well be 2020 and not 2002 because I don't really don't see what it brings to the story. But it's a very minor thing. Let's go to verdict. When a novel has many big ideas, and this is one, I always try to define a central one and I try to isolate it from the rest. Would novels still work with only its central premise? And I think central idea here is actually the coming of age story and not the cosmic one. And I think it does. It absolutely works. 
the central relationship is the heart of the story and the story itself the pacing never slows down and it maintains its anti i i was enthralled from the beginning to the end lastly cosmic horror has come a long way and i'm happy that our that our authors like uh, muhammad that push it forward and not just do the tired all oh here is the decrepit old village in new england and it has this dark story about inbred villagers or something like that no this is this is not a retelling of lovecraft it, his influence is undeniable you cannot escape it but just very broad strokes otherwise four stars recommend it it's short effective gets the point across thank you for watching and see you next time <music>